The £400,000 Jaguar XJ220, the sublime supercar from Formula One Fantasy, launched in 1991. With a 3.5-litre twin-turbo racing engine and aluminium body, the XJ220 was about as close to perfection as it gets. Conceived in the boom times of the late 80s, when prices for top-of-the-range models were reaching Trump Tower heights, the XJ220 was unfortunately launched just after the bust. Now Jaguar is in dispute with somewhat miffed customers who want their £50,000 deposit back. The car they'd hoped to sell on for a handsome profit has become something of a white elephant. I heard them all talking. I guess you have to. The 80s. Those were the days when greed was good, my friends. We thought they'd never end. And so did the yobs in the city wine bars who started buying property, Porsches and Picassos in the belief that what goes up in value will surely continue to go up. For some at least, it was a golden era. A cash-rich, champagne-flowing, gold-card-flexing decade. Those were the days when you could put a Ferrari F40 into auction and see it do naught to 60 grand in under a second. On occasion, it could also reach a million pounds. It was at auctions like this that the market in supercars really began to take off. Financial speculators with an eye not for cars but for profit came into the market turning the supercar into another commodity to be traded like stocks and shares. One investor who learned how to make a killing was John Collins. After Black Monday, I was looking at newspapers and thought, why did I put my money in shares? Because I lost a lot. And I noticed that the prices of Ferraris were going up. I thought they would come down. And they were jumping like, you know, 10,000 pounds every few weeks. And I thought, that's strange. And I talked in about 10 of my friends to put 300,000 pounds together. And I went around putting deposits on cars everywhere and saying that I was coming into an inheritance in six months and I'd pay the balance. And in that six months, the price of the cars shot up and the company made about half a million pounds. Fair warning. They didn't really want a car to use. They didn't want to buy a car because it was something they had always wanted, had no interest in driving a Ferrari or an Aston Martin or a Porsche. They just wanted to make money. The opportunity was there. A number of them got together, put vast amounts of money into the marketplace, inflated the prices, and put the cars away while they went up in value. The Stora Car Warehouse in the Buckinghamshire countryside, a five-star lockup for luxury cars where, off the road, they could continue to grow in value. The speculator system was simple. Set up a syndicate to buy a car, store it away, then sell it on several months later, having pocketed a profit running into tens of thousands of pounds. If you have a valuable asset, whatever it is, you've got to have safekeeping for it. We looked after it. We used to keep the car in pristine condition. The speculator at the end of the day is only interested in one thing. How much can he, what is the bottom line? How much he's going to earn? Most speculators never ever came near, near a store car, but they were very concerned, all these investors, that their car was kept in a, in a, in a correct manner. It was right across the gamut of a car being sold for a £20,000 profit to a syndicate saying, invest £60,000 with us and we'll give you a very handsome return in investing then millions of pounds in classic cars. As values continued to inflate, the cars became unaffordable for all but an elite of investors. With the recession biting in 1990, suddenly the prices no longer seemed credible. The market for supercars evaporated. There was panic. And what happened? Certain people had, let's say, borrowings of £5 million pounds, or stock that on the Friday was worth £5 million. The horrible realisation on the Saturday that it was unsaleable because the buyers just disappeared. They were gone. I mean, overnight. And you looked at your cars and you thought, ugh, what am I going to do? Uh, indeed. For two years, the market for supercars was almost static. Slowly, the enthusiasts who'd been priced out of the market came back as values fell. The covers came off and the cars returned to where they belonged, the road. days of the speculator 
very high prices have, have now gone. Um, the, the euphoria is over. I think nowadays it's the serious investor, the, the serious enthusiast, who looks very, very, very carefully at their money and how money is earned. I think what the recession has taught us all, it's hard to earn money, but it's very, very easy to lose it very, very quickly. We've never uh, recommended anybody to buy motor cars purely as a financial investment. Uh, I'm sure Rio Tinto Zinc or something similar would be better, uh, a better bet. You have to invest in the fun of a motor car. You have to invest in the, uh, in the enjoyment, the return that it's going to give you that way. Um, I always thought, and I was used to say in the 70s in particular, that um, increasing values were a, a very good excuse to give to one's uh, wife or perhaps even husband these days um, uh, 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 for buying a car. Um, certainly if you're looking for a pure financial investment, motor cars, uh, and I would maintain a lot of collectible areas, uh, uh, are not really uh, for the pure investor. At last, supercars can again be driven with pride. Looking back, it defies belief that cars like the Ferrari F40 were kept away in lockups rather than doing what they were designed for, showing off on the road. You're obviously a complete enthusiast. That's right. I drive this. That's the point of having it. I don't keep it in the garage. I don't keep it under wraps. Um, I don't keep it in the, in the front living room. Right. It's, it's out there on the road at weekends. <laughs> if you don't put it on the mantelpiece, if you could, I guess. Well, that has been known, and I have seen a picture of one that's in somebody's uh, front house in his living room, and it's decorated all the way around it, and that's his sort of museum. <laughs>